Hello and good morning. I hope your revision for the upcoming MRCOG part two is going really well um, and I wish you every success. Um, this is my effort in trying to help you pass this exam. Um, so this is the TOG summary for April 2023 TOGs. Um, I've done two TOG articles in this um, and I'll be uploading subsequent videos um, with the rest of the TOG articles all summarised. Enjoy. So acute coronary syndrome is common in the third trimester of the pregnancy compared to the other trimesters. STEMI, so which is ST elevated myocardial infarction, 75% of maternal acute coronary syndromes uh, are representative of this. Non-STEMI, so non-ST elevated MI includes ST depression, T wave inversion, or the ECG could actually be normal, but cardiac biomarkers like, for example, troponin is raised. It's important to also remember that troponin is highly sensitive, but it's very non-specific of myocardial injury. So it could go up in conditions like myocarditis, renal failure, sepsis, hypertension, cardiomyopathy, aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism uh, and, and tokatsubo, as well as preeclampsia, cardiac decompensation and autoimmune diseases with cardiac involvement. Thrombosis and thromboembolism accounts for 10 to 20 percent of acute coronary syndrome. Coronary artery spasm uh, represents about 2 percent of acute coronary syndrome in pregnancy. So um, for the chest x-ray, the fetal dose of radiation um, to, the, to the fetus is less than 0 0.001 mgy. F doses uh, of radiation that cause fetal malformation are above 50 mgy. So it's very important to know this, to be able to counsel your patients when you're recommending uh, a, a investigation um, if you if you have got this background information, cardiac CT gives a radiation dose of between one and three mg5. CTPA, the fetal radiation exposure, is 0 0.01 to 0 0.66 mgy. So it's still quite small. However, the problem with CTPA is the significant increase. That's 13.6% uh, increase of maternal risk of breast cancer is above the background risk. Uh, so thrombolysis, uh, it's a relative contraindication in pregnancy because of risk, increased risk of maternal bleeding. And there's especially bleeding from the subplacental area. If it's used to treat PE, it's associated with 6% risk of fetal loss and 6% uh, risk of premature delivery. Neither streptokinase nor recombinant tissue plasminogen activate across the placenta in significant amounts. So clopidogrel is safe in pregnancy. The loading dose is 600 milligrams and then 75 milligrams thereafter. Clopidogrel has a long half-life uh, and ideally needs to be stopped five to seven days before regional anesthesia. Um, so things like epidural, spinal. Um, aspirin is safe in preg pregnancy and breastfeeding. Um, secondary prevention drugs like uh, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors uh, and statins, um, uh, you know, can, so beta blockers are used for treatment of uh, hypertension in pregnancy and are safe, but associated with fetal hypoglycemia and growth restriction. Furosemide is safe in pregnancy and breastfeeding. ACE inhibitors and angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, which include angiotensin receptor uh, neprolysin inhibitors, are contraindicated in pregnancy because of because they're teratogenic. Um, 
also uh, angiotensin receptor blockers and angi angiotensin receptor uh, neprilysin inhibitors are should be avoided in breastfeeding but ACE inhibitors can be used. Low molecular weight heparin and unfractionated heparin is safe in pregnancy and breastfeeding but um, but uh, it can be risky uh, to be given at the time of delivery. So contraception that's advised to be used with um, uh, women with history of ischemic heart disease. So method of contraception barrier methods. Um, so it's not recommended alone owing to high failure rates. Combined hormonal contraception is to be avoided. It's UKMEC4 in ischemic heart disease chronic heart failure and stage 2 hypertension owing to increased risk of uh, venous thromboembolism, myocardial infarction and worsening hypertension. Um, systemic progesterone only contraceptions, there's no contraindications to those. Um, intrauterine methods, um, so in, it should be inserted in a hospital setting because of the risk of vasovagal collapse secondary to cervical stimulation at the time of insertion uh, in women with residual left ventricular dysfunction. Sterilization, uh, laparoscopy may not be possible in women with um, severely impaired cardiac function. Emergency contraception, so levonorgestrel, um, ulipristal uh, acetate and copper IUD is safe. Delivery would preferably be de should be delayed until at least several weeks uh, have passed from the acute event. Uh, this allows the women to recover. Uh, delivery is not needed before uh, a PCI, which is um, a primary coronary intervention. Um, for women with cardiac disease, recommendation for delivery is around 40 weeks. Induction is recommended. Prostaglandin E analogues like prostin, propes, and oxytocin can be used. Um, if there is severe or unstable cardiac function, prostaglandin F analogues such as carboprost and ergometrin should be avoided. In second, in second stage, um, allow two hours for passive descent of presenting part before commencing pushing. So that's two hours of passive descent. This allows this shortens the active stage for the patient. Um, shortening the active stage by performing early instrumental delivery is not, um, you know, routinely recommended. Um, but assisted vaginal birth should be utilized for routine obstetric indications. Risk of recurrence of acute coronary syndrome in pregnancies, uh, you know, um, especially there's a hit when there's a history of ischemic heart disease is about 9%. Um, pregnancy should be delayed for at least 12 months after an acute coronary event. Okay, so this uh, takes us nicely to the next talk article, which is uh, titled as Non-Immune Hydrops Fatalis, a Practical Guide for Obstetricians. So Hydrops Fatalis is an abnormal fluid accumulation um, in at least two of the fetal compartments. So it could be pericardial, pleural, ascites or skin edema. Non-immune hydrops fatalis is specifically referred where maternal antibodies against red cell antigens have been excluded. It affects about 1 in 2,000 pregnancies um, with some seasonal variants to the power virus B19. Causes of non-immune hydrops fatalis include chromosomal or monogenic abnormalities, fetal infections, fetal cardiovascular problems. Non-immune hydrop fatalis is associated with 60% of perinatal mortality with significant perinatal morbidity and maternal implications due to polyhydramnias, malpresentation and preterm birth. There's also small but significant risk of maternal mirror, maternal mirror syndrome, uh, which is like a preeclampsia-like condition where the mother begins to mirror the state of the hydro Hydropic fetus. So ultrasound features contributing and not contributing to the diagnosis of hydrops vitalis. So you've got the diagnostic criteria, which is pericardial effusion, pleural effusion, ascites, and skin edema. So 
in hydrops vitalis um, you can see polyhydromnias for example um, you can so the feature that's not directly related is things like ventromegaly uh, lung cystic lesions gastrointestinal tract uh, bowel dilatation urogenital like hydronephrosis uh, megacystitis and hydrocele um, features may occur due to hydrops vitalis which but not diagnostic is polyhydromnus and placento uh, megaly as well so this uh, table uh, chart goes through uh, mechanisms resulting in non-immune hydrops vitalis that's nihf so um, it could be that um, the child has uh, inborn met metabolic disorders, hematological disorders, infections, which lead to hepatic failure. This leads to high plasma os oncotic pressure, which increases the interstitial fluid, hence resulting in the non-immune um, uh, hydrops vitalis. Now, you can also have cardiovascular anomalies, hematological disorders, impaired venous return that can lead to cardiac failure, in turn leading to hepatic failure, also increasing the central venous pressure, increasing the interst interstitial fluid, uh, and hence causing uh, non immune hydrops vitalis. You can also have uh, lymphatic dysplasia, which reduces the lymphatic flow, hence increases the interstitial fluid, which cause which can in turn cause non uh, non immune hydrops vitalis. Um, so it's quite a handy little flow chart to just understand why there is this um, accumulation of fluid um, in um, the in the baby so causes and mechanisms of non-immune hydrops vitalis um, so we've already gone through some of these so you can see that um, they're also talking about prevalence in this table so prevalence by different trimesters first second and third so genetic so chromosomal and abnormalities um you know the, the prevalence of this uh, is the highest in the first trimester naturally so if there is a chromosomal problem it's likely to show up earlier on so it's 70 percent uh, prevalence by by trimester um, then you've got other causes like infections, uh, you've got hematological problems, extracardiac anomalies, tumours, uh, fetal maternal hemorrhage, and, and it could also be unknown. So this a table summarises it really nicely for you where um, it, it talks about the factors to consider when uh, trying to diagnose the different causes of hydrops vitalis. So um, you've got history taking. So you ask about um, obstetric history, family history, recent illnesses, infections, contacts, um, travel and profession, maternal um uh, status so you want to ask about discomfort abdominal expansion symptoms of preeclampsia blood pressure you want to do a urinalysis check for pcr so protein creatinine ratio clinical examination uh, would include feeling the abdomen checking the reflexes um, taking venous blood sample for fbc using these lfts coagulation um, and also uh, pigf ratio um, which is specific placental growth factor. Uh, imaging you want to consider is for uh, the baby, for example, so 2D and 3D fetal ultrasounds, fetal growth velocity, placental appearance like a volume, MRI. Maternal investigations also include maternal virology screen, hemoglobinopathy screen. Fetal investigations include fetal DNA testing, fetal hemoglobin, uh, pleural tap and acidic tap. So this uh, flowchart goes through how to manage the patient. So first trimester non-immune hydrops vitalis is identified on the dating scan. You inform uh, the patient about chance of miscarriage, refer to fetal medicine unit. Um, you take a full history from the patient as we discussed in the uh, table previously. You also perform an ultrasound uh, of the fetus. Um, if the fetus has passed away, um, you counsel the patient 
arrange medical surgical management of miscarriage um, and, and send the products of conception for cytogenetics. Um, now, if the patient uh, wishes for diagnostic testing and she's under 15 weeks, then you want to arrange for chorionic villus sampling. And if she's above 15 weeks, then amniocentesis. If the PCR, if P PCR, if negative and pregnancy um, continuing, discuss um, with uh, clinical genetics um, for uh, for uh, test for further testing. Um, infection screen compare with booking bloods, um, PCR of amniotic fluid if suspected fetal infection. Refer to um, for other specialist opinions um, depends on what's found. If the patient declines uh, diagnostic testing, then she could still be referred for other specialist opinions. Um, and if the pregnancy is ongoing, then it needs an MDT care um, approach. So you need a multidisciplinary approach to managing the pregnancy. You also need to involve um, the neonatal, the palliative care, the neonatal paediatric specialist and clinical genetic team and, and shared decision, decision making should take place at all times um, in order to manage the patient well. However, if this is picked up in second or third trimester on the ultrasound scan, then urgent assessment uh, should be arranged for fetal anemia. So carry out MCA Doppler, this middle cerebral artery Doppler, if MC, uh, MCA P, um, uh, peak systolic velocity is above 1.5, um, then urgent uh, assessment in fetal medicine unit. A full history uh, should be taken, like we discussed before. A full detailed ultrasound should be performed in the fetal medicine department. Um, and if fetal anemia is confirmed, then counsel the patient about this, uh, perform a rescue uh, in utero transfusion, uh, identify immune causes uh, and, and, and treat if you can. Now, there's no anemia then and or the patient declines uh, diagnostic testing then and the pregnancy is carrying on then again it's an MDT approach involving lots of specialists we've discussed before like the neonatal the palliative care the pediatric specialist and clinical genetics team um, also shared decision making should uh, be taking place at all times um, now if it's also if it's not uh, anemia um, and then the patient does wish for diagnostic testing, then amnia could be offered uh, above 15 weeks. Um, PCR, um, if, if negative and pregnancy uh, continuing, um, discuss with clin clinical genetics. Um, infection screen should also, should also be carried out. If the patient wishes for termination of pregnancy, counsel about feticide if a uh, patient will be above 21 um, weeks 21 plus six weeks um genetic testing of the cord the fetal tissue um also the um the chromosomal microassay and uh, and also um esosome sequencing should be carried out in order to uh, try and find a cause um of this um, unfortunately, if there is fetal demise, then counselling should be should be offered. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, inform the patient and arrange medical um, management or surgical, um, you know, cons cons you know, depending on patient wishes. Genetic testing of the cord and the fetal tissue, along with chromosomal assay and um, es es esome, um sequencing as well, which is just a um, a special sort of chromosomal, um, uh, you know, testing that they have to perform. So um, I hope this has been uh, useful to you. As I said earlier, I will be uploading uh, the other TOG articles from the April 2023 TOG and also from the January 2023 TOG very soon, uh, all to be done hopefully before your um, uh, exams, which uh, one of you has kindly mentioned it's on the 5th of July. So I'll make sure um, that's all uploaded before then so you can all benefit from these TOG article summaries um, and good luck revising.